right now on ABC 21 News at noon. It's being called New York City's deadliest blaze in three decades. What firefighters believe sparked the flames? And if you want to upgrade your heating in this bitter cold, we'll tell you about a city program offering some help. From WPTA, your weather authority, this is ABC 21 News at Noon. We begin with a live look over Fort Wayne this afternoon. A cold, chilly start to the day today, but things will be slightly warming up soon. Good afternoon and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Samantha Myers. Let's first check in with meteorologist Nick Marusiak for the very latest. Nick, things were freezing this morning and we even see saw some snowflakes. Yeah, it was actually a little bit of a dusting in Fort Wayne. Not necessarily heaviest snow that we've ever seen, but just enough that it coated some of the uh, ground and certainly the driveway sidewalks. They still remain covered, although the secondary roads have started to get better. You're also seeing maybe just a little bit of a, a dusting there. Still some snow up around uh, the north of uh, Warsaw over towards South Bend, also in towards the uh, Kenneville and to Bend, LaGrange County area. And again, nothing particularly that heavy today, but there was a little bit of snow on the ground. As for the wind chills, that's probably your other biggest factor. Right now, it feels like five degrees. So despite the fact that we've warmed up nearly 10 degrees or so, it is still a very cold day. Rest of today, partly to mostly cloudy with temperatures remaining in the low to mid 20s. We have seen just enough sunshine that we had to bump up temperatures. Could still be one or two spots that remain in the teens. Otherwise, it'll be breezy. Temperatures and winds will diminish substantially overnight. Could be looking at another morning where we'll wake up to temperatures feeling closer to zero. We'll have that in just a little bit. Nick, thank you for that. It's the final hours for parents who want to register for the lottery at Fort Wayne Community Schools. You have until the end of the day to sign up if you want to take part in the 2022 to 23 school choice lottery, which allows for some students to enroll at a school outside their geographic zone. The application is online at fortwayneschools.org. The lottery itself takes place February 4th. Fort Wayne residents and business owners are invited to the first of four open houses discussing the Packard 2030 neighborhood plan. The city of Fort Wayne is partnering with the Packard Area Planning Alliance to host the open houses. Those who come out can review, give feedback and ask questions about the plan. It was created back in 2005 to guide growth and investment in south central neighborhoods. The project is expected to be complete this summer. If you can't make it tonight, this is a list of more dates this week. You can pop in anytime today from 10 to 8 at the Wondercomer Company. If you're looking to go more in depth in learning about the nation's 16th president, the Roland Center for Lincoln Research opened today at the Allen County Public Library. The new center used both technology and physical items from the Lincoln collection to tell the president's story. This collection used to be in the Lincoln Financial Museum in Fort Wayne. Now it's been divided between the ACPL Indiana State Museum and historic sites. Again, you can check that out now today. Fort Wayne police have taken 36-year-old Thomas May into custody on several charges in connection to Friday's police action shooting on Lemonwood Court. According to police, an officer shot May at a home in the 800 block. They say they were responding to a call of a person threatening to kill themselves. The officers at the scene told us that man was armed. Paramedics rushed the man to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. And last night, May was released from the hospital and taken into custody. Some of the charges include four counts of pointing a loaded firearm, neglect of a dependent, and six counts of criminal recklessness with a deadly weapon. All of those are felony charges. A favorite for Fort Wayne foodies is back this week. You can get 12 days of deals with Savor Fort Wayne. This year, 68 restaurants are participating, offering special three-course deals. Menus at these restaurants will be posted and reservations are recommended. That's starting this Wednesday and running through Sunday, January 23rd. If you're in need of a new HVAC system, the city of Fort Wayne might be able to help. The Office of Housing and Neighborhood Services are now accepting applications for the city's heating and air conditioning program. You can get a 0% interest loan for the replacement and installation of a new heating and air conditioning system. It's a 10-year loan with monthly payments. There's a few things you should keep in mind to see if you qualify. 
You must own your house. It has to be your primary residence, and it must be located in Fort Wayne. You have to have a household income at or below 80% of the area median income as well. For a paper application, you can call the number on your screen, or you can also apply online. We turn now to the latest on the tragedy out of New York City, where 19 people have died in a massive fire that broke out in a Bronx apartment building. Nine of those victims are children. 13 other people are fighting for their lives in the hospital. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. At least 19 are dead, including nine children in what officials are calling the deadliest fire in New York City in more than 30 years. Fires on the third floor of a one nine story occupied MD. The flames breaking out in this high rise Bronx apartment building Sunday just before 11 a.m. An open apartment door allowing the thick, heavy smoke to rapidly engulf all 19 floors. My kids scream, say fire, fire. So I told you everybody get out. Over a dozen still fighting for their lives after the smoke from the fire quickly spread. More than 200 firefighters rushing to save those who were trapped. Many of them of their oxygen tanks were on empty, uh, but instead of turning back and exiting the building, uh, they pushed, pushed through, through the smoke. Many residents even jumping into action themselves to help their neighbors. I told you, you're not safe in your house. Come into my house. We went inside my bedroom because it was better for us to breathe. It was just all about help whoever you can help. It got to a point where it was just so much black smoke in the house, we could barely see each other. Officials say a space heater ignited a mattress in a third floor apartment causing this tragedy. Now authorities are investigating the building. So far, they say it appears there were no known issues. A main focus, that open door. In 2018, the city passing a law mandating self-closing doors in all apartment buildings. We're going to go through this building. We're going to go in, use this as an example of how do we fix this so it doesn't happen again. And dozens of families are now left without their homes. The governor organizing a victim's fund to help them secure housing and move forward. Rena Roy, ABC News, The Bronx, New York. Ohio Representative Jim Jordan appears to be refusing a request to meet with the House Select Committee investigating January 6th. He sent the committee a four-page letter Sunday saying he has no relevant information, though Jordan's letter does not specifically state he's refusing to cooperate with the committee. Its tone appears to indicate he does not intend to. Lawmakers on that committee want to talk to him because he sent a text message to then White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in the lead up to the insurrection. It was a forwarded message outlining a legal theory that then President, Vice President Mike Pence could block the certification of President Joe Biden's electoral victory. The committee says it will respond to Jordan's letter in the coming days, and that response could include a subpoena. Coming up next on ABC 21 News at noon, a new estimate suggests up to 5 million people could be out sick with COVID this week. The impact that could have on the economy next. You're watching ABC 21 News at Noon with Kayla Stewart and meteorologist Nick Maruziak. ABC 21, your weather authority. Domestic airlines canceled more than 1,300 flights Sunday due to COVID. Tens of thousands of flights have been canceled since Christmas when the Omicron variant tightened its grip. The rapidly spreading infection has also impacted the cruise industry. Royal Caribbean canceled four voyages Friday and Norwegian canceled eight earlier last week. So far, airlines have canceled more than 700 flights for Monday. That number does not include those that have been delayed. Now onto the coronavirus pandemic, particularly the highly contagious Omicron variant and its effect on communities. Hospitals continue to fill up across the country, nearing a pandemic high, with the increase in hospitalizations adding to the strain on already overwhelmed medical staff. Omicron causing a surge in cases affecting several sectors of the economy, most notably schools. ABC's Ika Jopji is in Washington with more. 
Today, Chicago students are staying home for a fourth day in a row due to ongoing negotiations between the city and the teachers union. The city's mayor determined to return students to the classroom right away. Teachers refusing to come to work until changes are made. Their union negotiating for a masking policy, a district-wide testing program, and the option to return to full remote learning that could be triggered if there's a surge in COVID cases. Right now, union officials are proposing students begin virtually virtual learning on Wednesday with a return to in-person classes on January 18th. It and hopefully produce confidence that we're not talking about a long indefinite period where schools are remote. But it's not just Chicago, the highly contagious Omicron variant affecting school districts all across the country. 90 schools in Philadelphia will be closed this week, as will school districts in Detroit, Michigan, Newark, New Jersey, and Cleveland, Ohio, among many others. Those districts electing to go back to remote learning due to the surge in the virus and teacher shortages. Yet many health experts say in-person learning is safe. If people wear high quality masks, even without those other upgrades, which I would like to see, it still is safe to, uh, for kids and teachers to be back in schools. For hospitals, the rapid spread of the Omicron variant straining medical staffs. More than 130,000 people are currently hospitalized, just shy of a pandemic high. The demand for testing also rising, but new reporting suggests the shortage in testing kits will continue. ABC News learning the Biden administration's plan to send 500 million at-home COVID tests to Americans is still expected to be weeks away, unlikely to come in time for the current surge sweeping across the country. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Well, it's Monday, which means it's time for Opportunity Knocks. Today, I'm joined by Cindy Verduz, the director of the Career Center and Regional Services for Indiana Tech. She's got some helpful tips for new graduates who are looking for a job, I would think that the job market right now is pretty good for new graduates. There, there are a lot of openings, absolutely. So you really need to be able to manage those openings too. Number one, I really uh, suggest that folks network, network, network. Make sure everybody knows you're looking for a job, what kind of job you're looking for, because they may hear of something and can refer you to, to someone. Um, along with that, you do want to make sure that you're connecting with your people in your network when you apply for a job. For example, I just had someone apply for a job. They looked and one of their references actually knew the hiring manager. So that was a great way to be able, for that person to be able to say, hey, such and such is applying for a job. They could flag that job interview uh, application and makes that better connection in terms of that. Also, make sure you're managing your job boards. There's a lot of uh, uh, job agents that you can set up in Indeed and other job boards that will send you job postings that are particular to the job you're kind of looking for. So you don't have to pour through everything. They just come straight to your inbox. So that's a great way to do that. You also can use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is really becoming one of the number one ways that employers are finding talent, especially that latent talent. So if you mark your LinkedIn uh, profile saying you're open to work, that gives employers a key to say, hey, I need to contact this person. They might have what I'm looking for. And again, the employers come to you, which is what employers are doing. Well, and I want to ask because I think sometimes with, with younger generations, they can be kind of overwhelmed with, well, it's online. Should I call? Should I email? I don't know. It says not to. Yep. What do you recommend in that situation? Again, that's where using your network really comes in handy. Follow the directions of what they ask for. But then if you know of someone who knows someone, which if you use your LinkedIn, you can do that, ask them to give the person a call so that they can flag and tag that job application. Any last minute tips? Do your research. Do Learn, research. Make sure you wanna see that it's the kind of company you wanna go work with in the environment you're interested in. Learn as much as you can. All right, Cindy, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Now it's time for our work one job of the day. Speaking of jobs, Midwest Service and Supply in Fort Wayne is looking for loss prevention and security associates. Pay is between 12 and $16 an hour. You must have a high school diploma or equivalent. For more information, call the work one office. On Wall Street this noon hour, the markets are down. The Dow Industrials are down 435. The Nasdaq is down 281 and the S&P 500 is down 67. Much more ahead on the ABC 21 News at noon. Another bitter cold start to the day today, but things will get a little bit warmer through the week. Could we see more snowflakes? Nick is in next with the forecast.
Good afternoon. It has been a much colder day than yesterday. Earlier this morning, we were 20 to 25 degrees colder. Now we're about 15 degrees colder over the last 24 hours. We have gotten into the 20s with the exception of Angola. So Angola last holdout. We probably will see 20s across the board today. Still, maybe a spot or two does remain in the teens. It is just one of those days that no matter where you are, it is cold. And that's really influenced by the fact that we have a good bit of wind outside. Winds are right around 20 miles per hour, Fort Wayne, Warsaw, Van Wert, 15 elsewhere. In essence, that we are getting these wind chills, making it feel closer to the single digits. In fact, uh, closer to zero than it is the double digits in Kendallville, Angola, uh, rather uh, Portland and Marion, 9 degrees, uh, Defiance 9 as well. So we are talking about a uh, cold day overall, and we did get some snow out of it. Today was not a day where we expected measurable snow in terms of one, two, with a little bit of a dusting in Fort Wayne, depending on where you are. And we still have some snow south of South Bend over in towards the uh, Kendallville area as well. Perhaps the far northern part of Allen County getting into the snow axe. So at least at this point, we are done with uh, any type of st snow that will stick to the ground in Fort Wayne. But we can still see some flakes in the air. This should wrap up over the next, let's say, hour or two from there. We may get some clearing, although I would still say at this point, I would expect a, a good cloudy sky or two over the next uh, ensuing hours. We'll have to watch as we get into the morning, and it really depends on where exactly this strip of clouds ends up, how thick it is to determine how much temperatures will drop. If we are to see hours of clearing, Fort Wayne could easily get down well into the single digits, and that's close to zero. Angola, Auburn, any spot that did pick up a little bit more fresh snow, and it does stick around more likely to see that. Where it is cloudy, we could end up with temperatures into the teens so it's a little bit of a wider spread just based on a cloud cover. That's how important clouds are to keep temperatures up at night, especially once you do get those winds to diminish. Tomorrow should be a sunshine filled day, maybe a little bit breezy. Wednesday we do get clouds, but I'm not expecting any type of heavy duty weather. Still clouds at Fort Wayne, although starting to get some sunshine here or there. Temperatures as a result have warmed to 20 degrees. That sun really a big factor of why we've warmed up uh, or should I say why well, we've tried to warm up. Flurry is possible, otherwise cloudy to mostly cloudy across the area. Again, you will get these pockets of sunshine from time to time. Then as we get into tonight, a mix of clouds and clear skies that nine I, again, it's going to be a wide variety. That may just be an average where you have half of us in the teens, the other half well down into the single digits. Then for tomorrow, 27. So a lot warmer outside no matter how you strike it, especially considering the lack of wind. Now, Wednesday will be the warmest day. We'll be in the 20s in the morning, getting up into the upper 30s. Thursday also warm, although maybe just slightly less so. Friday to Saturday, a transition day. Saturday, the one day that I have flagged as at least a potential for snow across the area, but it's only at this point the potential. Nothing is 100% imminent. Wherever this next system goes does have the potential to bring snow, but it may end up just skirting by us, or let's say a scenario where it doesn't quite come to fruition, we may end up in a little bit of a drier area where others areas south and east could get that snow. All right, I'm just hoping Wednesday feels a little bit warmer. That 39, I'll take it. Yeah, at this point, it's a lot better than, you know, what is it, 5 degrees right now. Yeah, Nick, thank you. Coming up next on ABC 21 News at noon, a rough rescue. How people saved a dog stuck in 5 feet of snow. A rough rescue for a dog stuck in five feet of snow in Tahoe, but he's finally back home with his owner. Turns out the dog had actually been missing since August. Marley Ginter with the rescuers who found him cold and cranky and growling stuck in the snow. When December dumped mountains of snow in Tahoe, caught in the middle of it was three-year-old pit bull mix, Russ. So dogs are strong and smart and they can survive a very long time. We had, did not know the situation with this dog or how long he had been out there. Try four months. Russ's owner, a traveling nurse, was in Tahoe when the Caldor fire swept through. Forced to leave when the city was evacuated, Russ ran off, never to be seen again. Until now, on a mountainside stuck in snow five feet deep. So I followed the tracks and all of a sudden saw this dark 
shape underneath the tree. And then he opened his eyes and I'm pretty sure I screamed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Elsa heard me down the mountain. <laughs> Tahoe Paws volunteers Leona Allen and Elsa Gull walked me through their uphill battle on snowshoes and with a sled to get Russ to safety. And I kind of petted him under the chin a little bit and then he just did the, you know, where a dog rests their head in your hand. The sweetest thing on the planet. Just, just the most amazing dog. We're just like, he's here. Okay, now what's next? And we didn't really think about that. So I look over at Leo and I go, how do you feel about riding down in the sled with him on your lap? <laughs> we slid down and we kind of tipped over. <laughs> and we decided that that was the end of the sleigh ride. The end of an adventure and now the beginning of many more for Russ. It's, it was so heartwarming, especially around the holidays. It's the end of the year. I mean, the year was, you know, so hard on everybody. And then just to have this really happy ending and to be able to be a part of that was, you know, it's pretty special. <laughs> well, we love a good dog story here yeah. and that is a good one. Yeah, I, I, I love looking at my dog when she's outside in the morning and I'm looking through the window and I just see her just tumbling in the snow <laughs> like rolling over and she's so happy and i'm like you do that it's too cold for me and uh it'll still be cold tomorrow morning probably just about as cold as this morning just based on uh temperature and whatever wind is still around breezy for the rest of today tomorrow more sunshine wednesday and thursday the highlight before we start to get cool again for the weekend thank you so much for joining us we hope you have a great rest of your monday